Alrighty traders, well welcome to this bonus session and we're talking about the Aussie data. This is the new data coming out. By the way, I've got uh, uh, the chat going up over here on the screen. I've got the uh, uh, screen over here where we're going to go ahead and check out the market. I've got light shining in my eyes. It's early evening. Well, it's, I guess it's mid-evening at the moment right now. So I'm struggling at the moment right now. I had a good dinner with the family. Didn't drink, so I am good to go. All right. So uh, with that being said, traders, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what the, the data is coming out this evening. Let's jump straight into that right now because we've got about 30 minutes to go. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and take a look and see exactly what we can expect out in the market this evening. And I do appreciate everyone joining me. And uh, there we go. We've got Kathy in the house. And by the way, traders, uh, uh, you'll notice that uh, the only thing that's showing right now is the actual webinar uh, 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 webcam right now so if you want to go ahead and just make sure that that's the only thing that you're viewing I'm not going to be using the uh, screencast I'm only going to be using the uh, uh, the actual webcam right now and it should be clear and good to go uh, go ahead and let me know if everyone can see that screen right now I'm actually going to show you um, the live view right here everyone should be able to see me too it's coming through loud and clear and looks great here on on the screen so I'm doing a double check to make sure that everything is working the way it should be and we're going to be looking at the the charts as well in a moment all right good we've got uh, Kathy in the house here Kathy Tom good to see you Tom we've got Ed right here says I see you Bruce is in the house the nice the nice is in the house by the way it's the niece we've got a private joke going there it is the nice to me so uh, we've got uh, we've got John in the house we've got Paul we've got Carol we've got Michael good to see you Michael so we've got a whole bunch of traders right here ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on this evening. So the reason why I call the special session is because we've got the Aussie data coming out. As you can see right here, Aussie data, very excited about this because we do have some technical setups that are setting up this, uh, um, this uh, week. And we had spoken about this. And uh, so the... Um, the Aussie data is the employment change right here and unemployment rate. Now, normally I would not go ahead and create a special session on this, but the reason why I created a special session on this particular session right here is because of the fact that we are setting up very cool on a lot of these currency pairs. Now, traders, I hope you're enjoying the pound rally as I spoke about the, uh, the weekly outlook this week. I posted earlier this week on Monday about exa exactly what you can expect out of the pound crosses, and uh, we got in some pound uh, pound uh, Canadian. In fact, that's paid off already. Uh, we've got pound US dollar that's still active, and we've got a lot of pound currency pairs that are starting to move this week, which is very, very awesome. I also said that it's only really going to be dependent on whether or not we have good Brexit coming out this week, because if that wasn't going to be the case, pounds would go ahead and start dipping down. We've had some great movements out of that, and I know there's a lot of traders that are raking in a huge amount of pips. In fact, we had uh, a, a live session to today, and I just asked traders, hey, let me know how you're doing as a trader. How many pips are you making this week? And we had traders that are saying, 25,000 pips this month. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? 25,000 pips? You are crazy. Well, in any case, good for him. Great 25,000 pips. We had traders out there with 1,500, 800. Uh, a, a couple of traders out there with two and a half thousand pips for the week um, and for the month they've got anything between three thousand to five thousand pips it's been a blast but you know what most of the profit has been generated from the pound crosses we've had some great recovery in the pound crosses now let's see the Aussie crosses have moved bearish we've seen some weakness out of the Aussie over the last few weeks in fact they had like a, a trader that's actually in a lot of these pairs uh, um, I'm going to call her name out. It's a uh, uh, Karen. Karen's in action. One of these, uh, a couple of these trades in the Aussie crosses where she's buying right now, and the market's just been dipping, dipping, dipping. We've had a little bit of recovery, but not a whole bunch. So it's going to be exciting to see if we're going to get some sort of recovery because I do have Aussie JPY and Aussie CAD that I'm still long time bearish on this since May. So I'm looking for a good recovery on Aussie JPY and Aussie Canadian now. Let's take a look and see what's going on right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a look right here. Tom says, what goes, uh, uh, what goes up must come down. You are absolutely spot on there, Tom. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look right here. Now, we've got the Aussie data coming out right here. 
the Aussie data is expected. Now, we've re this, this, uh, this morning, in the live session, we looked at the actual results from the previous month, and we noticed that we had very similar sort of data coming out. We actually had a, a positive data coming out here with the, uh, uh, with the employment change last month. And in fact, the market dipped down south. And the reason why it dipped back down south is because of the unemployment rate. If you take a look right here, the unemployment rate came out last, week, uh, last month at a negative number. Okay, It rose 5.3% from, from the forecast and the previous of 5.2%. So we had a downside move in uh, the Aussie last month. Now, since then, the Australian, uh, the, the central banks for Australia had gone ahead and uh, uh, raised, sorry, <laughs> reduced the rates by 25 basis points. So they've done that early in the, the, the beginning of the month. They've raised the, uh, sorry, they've uh, cut the rate. And so that's given a little bit of a stimulus to the economy. But let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens now. Now. The forecast right here is projected at 5,000. Uh, sorry, 15,000. Sorry, it's very late at night. Give me a break. 15,000 right here. We're expecting 15,000 to be the number. All right. If that is higher, we're expecting some strong Aussie dollar. Now, if this stays unchanged, that's going to be good. That means things are starting, starting to settle down with unemployment. And that's what they want to see. If this ticks down, man, we're going to see a very strong rally. On the Aussie dollar. We're going to see a very strong rally on the Aussie dollar. Now, this is the deal. Let's go take a look at the technicals, all right? Because I'm really all excited about the technicals. And by the way, check out what I've got going right here. I'm actually going to play a little bit of a, a, a poker game this, uh, um, this evening. Now, I'm just kidding. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and trade the one minute time frame. I've got my EA set up right here to go ahead and trade the news. I'm going to go ahead and deploy buys and sells above the market. See if the market does anything. If it does, fantastic. We're going to get in and trade it. If it doesn't, then you know, it, it is what it is. So we're going to go ahead and play some trades, have a bit of fun this evening, all right, with the news, and see if we can actually go ahead and scalp the market uh, as the market comes, uh, as the news comes out. Now, uh, with that being said, let's go back to the charts. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the, um, and we've got about 22 minutes left. I'm going to keep track of time. Somehow, I, I, I seem to forget about time for a moment especially when in trading rooms i always go over my sessions you know we're supposed to have a two hour session but i'm like are you kidding me two hours is way too short we're going to go a little bit longer than that so this is what we're going to go ahead and do we're going to check out all the aussie crosses we're going to start off the aussie canadian now traders very importantly right here as i go to the aussie canadian i'm going to go ahead and take a look at the daily time frame first check this out they spoke about this in our lead ups in our uh, in our uh, trading room today, we spoke about the way the market has gone ahead and created this indecision candle right here. I absolutely love this. All right. I love the fact that we've got this movement because why? Because, because this, my friends, is going to create an opportunity for us. All right. It's going to create an opportunity for what? For the market to go ahead and buy long. That's what I'm looking for. In fact, we've been looking at this for a while now and thinking that we're expecting some sort of upside move. In the, uh, in the Aussie Canadian dollar. Now, Karen, which is uh, currently and myself, that is long right now with the Aussie CAD, I'm expecting price to move up. Now, if I go ahead and compress the charts a little bit right here, I am I am concerned that we've had this a little bit of resistance right here, that price has stayed below. You can see how the market actually tried to get back up again. See how it tries to get back up again? I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer. See how price tries to get back above the level right there, but fails to do so? So this is going to be important, all right? And this is going to be absolutely fantastic for those that want to go ahead and pick up some swing trades, because this is what's going to happen. If price, if price breaks above this level right here by the end of two, uh, by the end of tomorrow, and we have a nice bullish candle on the daily time frame, guess what, traders? We're going to be, we're going to go back up, and we're going to start trading back up inside this re in this region right here. You can see here, we got a you got a like an a green line going across right here. This is actually a bit of resistance coming from a, and I'm going to crop press a little bit so you can see where it's coming from, come from a bit of consolidation right here. Let me go ahead and compress a little bit more. All right. In fact, I'm going to compress quite a bit. So you can see here that we've got a lot of consolidation right here that we're looking for price to get back into. So if, if the market goes ahead and breaks back above here, test this level, bounce back, or goes back in here, 
we could expect price start moving back higher on the Aussie CAD. Now, what's going to drive Aussie CAD going north? All right? What's going to drive it going north? Well, the only thing that can drive the Aussie CAD going north is possibly strong data coming out for the Aussies, but also US, uh, US oil, right? US oil could also create some sort of a, a, a downside move in Canadian dollar that could go ahead and stimulate and help the Aussie to rally back up north. And so how do we check that out? Well, we check out oil. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's go ahead and move to US oil. And now US oil, we were expecting US oil to drop down to about $41 a barrel. It's trading at 52 at the moment right now. Let's take a look at the daily. So here is the daily. And we have just come off. Check this out. We've just come off the market, bouncing back off here, which I like to call my signal lines. Bounce off the signal lines, bounce off the backside of this upward trend line right here. And we're starting to head back down south. So if price is going to work its way back down south, in US oil and US oil saw on the weekend, then that would absolutely help some sort of upside move in Aussie Canadian dollar, right? So that's what we're expecting right there. So if oil can continue to do what it's doing, we will see then a little bit of strength out of the Aussies. And if we get some positive Aussie news out this evening, that's going to be super, super cool because that's going to go ahead and be like a, a, a supercharged engine pushing the Aussie CAD back up to the upside. Now that is just one pair, right? Let's check out the other pairs. And, and all I'm doing right now, traders, I'm really just trying to get a good feel of what's going on with the market so I can anticipate what the market's going to do overall. Now, uh, not every day will the market do what I expect it to do. All right, and if it doesn't, I get pretty mad. But uh, uh, this is what happens. So with the Aussie JPY right now, I've moved to this currency pair. We can see on the daily time frame that price has gone ahead and broken above these blue lines. I love it when it breaks above these blue lines because it tells me the price may move up to this level right here. Especially when it closes out with a nice bullish candle right here above that level. I know that support's found. We can start heading back up north. Now, I've gone ahead and drew in some uh, wave cycles in here. I'm a wave trader and I like to trade waves. And you can see right here, I'm expecting price to move back down to retest wave one, which is here. This is my wave four right here. So what are we expecting? We expecting price to move back up to wave five. Where can I anticipate that? Well, right here at the 127, which is at that level where we can see our, uh, our resistance levels coming off that automated ch uh, channel right there. And that automated channel is what's going to drive this pair back down south. Now we've got Terex here, uh, uh, the Aussie CAD, a uh, weekly pivot unhit target at 60, well, 63 pips up. All right, well, that's the Aussie CAD, and um, uh, you may have posted that a little early, and I've only picked it up now. Appreciate you giving me that information. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see exactly what we can anticipate. In this particular pair, I'm going to anticipate that with all these little wicks down here, notice that all these little wicks that we've seen here. Check this out. See all these little wicks that we've got right here to the downside? That's creating a support level. I'm expecting Aussie to go back up north. This is Aussie JPY. Hey, the good thing is, traders, all right, with trade war at the moment right now, we're seeing a little bit of positive news coming out of trade war. All right, everything seems to be moving in a good direction regarding the China and US, dollar, uh, China and US trade agreement. And with that being the case, we're starting to see a little bit of a, a shifting of safe haven, right? A risk, risk on, risk off. And at the moment right now, with the fact that we've seen a little bit of weakness out in Swiss franc, a JPY, and US dollar, we're anticipating that this could drive the market north. Weaker JPY, a little good news out of the Aussies. Boom, shakalak. Boom, shakalak. All right, I'll get it. Boom, shakalak. Right, we're going to see a little bit of upside move on this. And Tom knows exactly what I'm talking about because he sent me a video. Awesome video, Tom. On boom shakalak. Now, this is the deal. As price moves up, if we get positive news out of trade uh, trade agreement for the trade agreement out of the US and China, and we also get the uh, the good news out of the Aussie dollar, you want to be a buyer in this market. Now, I like to call this as you go ahead and take a look at the chart. I like to call this, all right, this area right here, my neutral zone. But when I'm getting bullish candles inside here, all right. That gives me an opportunity to trade the short term moves going up right here. And if we bust through this level with a big, strong bullish candle right here, it's over Johnny. All right. 
When that happens, you can go ahead and start thinking about buying, 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 buying all day long till the market goes ahead and hits the next resistance level. So again, looking at the technicals, the technicals will tell me that the Aussie is heading north. We'll go to Aussie US dollar right here. Check this out. Oh, you gotta love this, right? You gotta love this. Now listen here. As a swing trader, all right, as a swing trader, we're trading below the signal line, which means that the that the bearers are in control and the market's pushing south. Okay? But if you look over here, there's a lot of support coming up with this trend line. We've just closed out with an indecision candle. I'm not saying that I'm gonna go ahead and trade right now. Right? I'm not saying it's time to go ahead and trade right now. But I am gonna say this. That if the market holds up with that indecision candle right there, and if I go ahead and actually be a little more technical right here, and it probably took me about a four, four years of art class to get this right, there we go. And if you do that and you draw that trend line going down, you can see we have a beautiful little cross right here that's indicating that res, uh, support is being found. Okay? Now, we need proper confirmation, right? We need a proper confirmation confirmation all right now what proper confirmation are we are we trying to look for and, and by the way guys uh, Tom says to me that there's no picture can everyone see uh, can everyone see uh, the, the camera right now you should be able to see the screen right now you should be able to see the back uh, I'm flipping flipping back and forth uh, Tom remember uh, go ahead and just look at the webcam area uh, don't use the other uh, the other location and you should be good to go does so everyone just type up a yes, we're good to go? All right, fantastic. Everyone says yes, we're good to go. We're all fine. Perfect. Fantastic. I appreciate that, guys. All right. Now, all right, Tom says got it now. All right, fantastic, Tom. All right. Now, as we continue, we're looking for price to continue back up north. All right. I'm definitely looking for price to continue to back up, to head back up north. Support's been found. Looking for a rally. Aussie US dollar? Absolutely. Now, this is a Aussie US dollar cross, all right? It's an Aussie US dollar cross. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it means that we are now have some, uh, some US dollar inflows. So let's go ahead and take a look at US dollar. I'm just going to take a quick look. Don't have to go ahead and break it down too much. Sometimes we overanalyze. Don't you think so? Don't you think, traders, that sometimes we look at the market and we like way overdoing it, right? We're way overdoing it. Well, check this out. Listen, yeah, we've been beating this horse for a long time. And let me zoom in a little bit more there. All right, there we go. And uh, we have finally come to support right here. All right, we finally come to support right here. Now, traders, I saw and I, I realized that we're in this fourth wave move. And I'm anticipating possible rally. But if price continues to break through, as we've been seeing over the last few days, bearish, bearish, bearish dollar. If we see it continue and break through this trend line, man, we are off to the races, right? We are off to the races. So we are going to anticipate some further downside move in this pair, right? So we're going to go ahead and do this. Go to the weekly. Check out the weekly. Check out this. If we break out of this rising wedge right here, it's heading south, all right? It's heading south. And if it's going to head south, what are we going to do? All right? What are we going to do on this? We are going to absolutely want to go ahead and sell it. All right? We're going to continue to sell because price on US dollar is going to drop south. It's going to taste, taste a bit of that support. It's going to bounce off that, head back down south. It always comes back to retest where it started off when it uh, uh, created the uh, the rising wedge from the start. So we can see, and in fact, this is the thing. This is one thing that we can be absolutely excited about, all right? The one thing that we can be really excited about is that when the market breaks through this rising wedge and it starts heading south, it's normally a very aggressive move. In fact, take a look at any currency pair. Go back as much as you can, right? And take a look at dailies, uh, dailies and weekly time frames. And when you see these type of wedges forming and the market breaks out of these wedges, it's normally a very aggressive move. So what we could probably anticipate over the next few months, a very aggressive move in dollar if we break through this resistance. Oh, sorry, this support. Let's call it what it is, right? The support right here. So it's important for us to go ahead and check that out. 
So that's good. If dollar continues to weaken, and if we do break through that, then let's go back to Aussie US dollar. What do you think is going to happen to Aussie US dollar? We just need some good news, right? We need some good news, and then Aussie US dollar is going to break north. As you can see right here, we have an opposite effect. We have a falling wedge on the Aussie US dollar. And in fact, we've hit a lot of support right here. You see, I've gone in, drawn over here. Check this out. Look at the Aussie US dollar. Check how much support we got here. Support we got here. If we break out to the upside, we're going to come back to these, the, the, uh, the upside uh, resistance, which is at this, which has created double tops right there. So we're going to come back to retest that. If we break here, it's going to be a sharp move to the upside. So that's going to be something real interesting. That's going to be 1,200 pips to the upside that we can go ahead and bank on. All right. Now that's the Aussie US dollar. Again, once again, expecting. Now listen here, traders, let's be clear on something. The news out today is not going to say that that's going to set the trend for the rest of the year. The news out today is not going to say that that's going to set the trend for the next week, two weeks. What's going to happen this to, tonight, whatever the news is going to be, it's going to start setting the pace that either, if, it, if it hits south, I don't think if, the, if, the, if the, the, the Aussie weakens, I don't think that's going to be long term. I think that's a way for uh, stop hunters to go ahead and kill stops, big, big traders to go ahead and just kill stops while they're going ahead and start to buy at the bottoms right here to move the market back up again. I think that the market is going to go ahead and do, just like we saw with the, uh, uh, the dollar uh, at the non farm peril, I think the market is going to do something like that and then start heading back up north. So this is just, just going to be a way for the market to go ahead and clear up those, uh, 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 those stops right here, but as it goes ahead and prices it back up again. I don't think we're going to get it long. And then the reason why I'm saying that, I'm not saying that because I'm thumb sucking and trying to guess what's going on right here. I'm looking at the data, all right, or well, more the, 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 the charts, and I'm anticipating what the charts are telling me. The charts are saying, hey, we could see this price go back up, all right? We could definitely see price go back up. And when it does go back up, we're going to be already willing to go ahead and start taking advantage of it. So we have to get prepared for that because when it does, all right, when we see price going back up, guess what, traders? We all want to be on board on this, right? We all want to be bored because the market is off to the race. Okay, I know that was cheesy, but I thought I'd go ahead and throw it out there, all right? It just made, made me feel good. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on right here. Let's go to the, uh, this, is a, this is Aussie US dollar. I'm going to flip over now to uh, Euro pound and, uh, and uh, Aussie. All right, there we go. Euro pound and pound Aussie. I'm going to go to the daily time frames. Now, traders, we've had a very good move. You can see right here, we've had some strong moves over the next. Uh, well, these over the last this count one, two, three, four, four weeks. Over the last four weeks, we've some seen some some awesome moves in the pound. Some awesome moves, and with the market moving as strong as as it has, all right, a lot of traders are fearing that maybe we're at an end. Maybe this is it. Maybe the market is not going to go any further. Well, let's go back to what we spoke about. All right. We spoke about the possibilities that the dollar, okay, oh, sorry, the, uh, the Aussie dollar could strengthen. We've got about six minutes left, by the way, traders. All right, so we said that there's a possibility that the Aussie dollar is going to strengthen. But now we also said that pounds had a very good rally over the last uh, uh, four weeks, and so the pound Aussie may come to a point where it's now stalling, right? It may end off the rally, but not in the long term, just in the short term, so it can recover it. So we can get this type of reaction right here, where price can go ahead and meet down and then move back up again. So if Aussie is going to strengthen, what's going to happen to the pound Aussie? Pound Aussie is going to dip back down south, right? So which means that there could be a dip, short-term dip, and then a new opportunity for traders to get back in again on the rally back up again. So check this out. Go ahead and take a look at the charts. Hmm? And I'm going to go ahead and compress it right here, and I'm going to go to the one hour. I'm going to sneak it over to the one hour. Okay, and yeah, I'm just going to kill some of the uh, technical analysis. And right here, all I'm looking for right here, and, and if, uh, I'm going to use, uh, let's see, what have I got here? Okay, there we go. All right. So I've used now uh, what I like to call my uh, um, my uh, um, um, smart waves, right? I've used my smart waves to, to go ahead and identify uh, what's going on right here. And what I'm seeing at the moment right now is that price has moved up to what I'm calling my fifth wave, all right? 
And what happens when the market moves to my fifth wave? When the market moves to my fifth wave, I'm anticipating price to then go ahead and retrace. So if I look at this right here and I have to break it down, I have to say that this is now becoming my larger swing. And so therefore, I'm looking for a correction move. Now again, traders, if the market spikes up, then goes, does this, and then drops back down, this is what I'm looking for. So I'm not, re I'm not particularly concerned about how the market reacts tonight, but I am going to say that whatever happens tonight may just be the move or the expected move that I can anticipate, which is a correction move, before we start seeing price moving back up. Now, I did tell you traders that I was in a lot of the pound crosses, and I said by the mid part, of uh, uh, mid part of October towards uh, maybe um, uh, the, the, the last week before the, uh, uh, the, the, the news on Brexit comes out. I said I'm going to go ahead and try and get out of all my pound crosses. I am in on pound JPY and I am still in on, uh, I believe, um, actually, oh, no, I think that's the only one that I'm actually in really, to be honest with you. I'll have to check my numbers, but p uh, pound JPY is the only one that I'm really in on at the moment right now that I'm trying to trade along. Um, oh no, wait a minute. No, I'm good. I, I closed out my trade last week. What am I saying? All right. I've, uh, there's two trading accounts that I have, and I think I've closed out both of them. Yep, I don't have that position anymore. I had something on the on uh, the pound US dollar, um, pound sorry pound Canadian, and I closed that out today. I do have oh yeah, I do have one pound US dollar trade open. So that's all I have right now. One pound US dollar trade open, but I got very little invested in that. In that trade, all right, and I'm going to look at see what it does by the next uh, couple of days, and then maybe going to have make a decision to go ahead and close that out just before Brexit comes out. But given coming back to what we're discussing right here on Pound Aussie, we're looking for Pound Aussie to possibly go ahead and retrace. I'm going to go ahead and sneak over to the uh, the next pair quickly. Next pair is going to be on the uh, uh, the Euro Pound, and it's down here. There, sorry, Euro Aussie. And this is the daily time frame. And again, daily time frame, you look over here, everything right now tells us that we should be heading north. But wait a minute. All right, let's go ahead and reveal the Euro Aussie prediction. What did I say about the Euro Aussie prediction? I said that the Euro Aussie is going to move down 2,700 pips. That's the Aussie uh, prediction, right? So check this out. We've already gone ahead and moved up to what we see as a possible right shoulder. Let's take a look and see here. And, and by the way, we want to make sure that we do have this set up right. Did it take out the low? No, it did not. So if it didn't, then this must be a head and shoulders pattern right here. Okay? This is a head and shoulders pattern. The neckline is this right here. That's the neckline. So we're coming up to the right tip. Are we going to go ahead and sell the market? No. No, we're not going to sell the market now because it hasn't confirmed yet. But tonight, with strong Aussie data, could start this trend down. And the fact that we've been seeing weaker euro... Bit of recovery over the leg of the last few days. This could be now the end of the euro rally, and we could see euro starting to dip back down, sell over a period of time. So this could be a very good starting point to start thinking euro Aussie bearish. All right. Now that's remember, don't forget that prediction. It's still in play, and this is what the weekly looks like. This is what the weekly looks like. We're tied up in this wedge, and we're looking for a breakout of the wedge. This is a four, this is a rising wedge. Looking for a breakout in that, and we're looking for a 2,700 pip opportunity. That's what it is. We've taken some profit on this move going south. We've stayed out of the market while it's gone up. In fact, we actually bought the, the uh, Euro Aussie right here on the short, uh, short correction right here. But now we're looking for price to go ahead and start turning back down south. All right? So absolutely looking for price to move down south. So we'll watch it and see what happens. We've got about a minute left to go. A minute left to go, traders. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my uh, my news uh, uh, chart. There it is there. Go ahead and pop that open so you can see a little bit more of what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and flip over to my EAs. And I'm going to go ahead and deploy right now. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, uh, trades there. Trades there. Trades there. Trades there. Trades there. All right, let's see. The news is coming out. And I think I got it just in time. Let's go take a look and see what's going on right here. I'm going to pull, pull up the, uh, and by the way, you hear that tick, 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 tick? That's just my stop loss being moving up with the market. As the market moves up, my stop's going to be moving up. So let's go ahead and take a look right here. I'm going to go ahead and view the um, terminal and go to trades right here. And there you can see those are the trades that I'm currently in. Those are the trades that are being eliminated. 
Some have been stopped because of the stop loss moved up. All right. So some of them moving up with the stop. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the trade history on today. So let's go ahead and take a look at the trade history today. I'm going to customize this to today. Let's take a look and see what's going on right here. So we picked up uh, almost 300 on that trade. There we lost 300. Those looks like the only two trades that we picked up. So it wasn't, it was pretty even. Uh, I see the Aussie US dollar. We still got a trade on the Aussie US dollar right here. And uh, let's see if that's still active. Uh, yes, in fact, we're making a 130 on that. We've got some other trades open here. We've got Aussie uh, JPY that looks like it may pick up an entry point. Okay. We've got uh, profit coming off the uh, Aussie US dollar. And I believe our stop loss has been moved up. If you can take a look at our stop loss. Uh, stop loss is slightly under our our buy price, so we've moved a little bit on that. Uh, let's see what else we got. That's the only thing that pick, picked up right here. That's the only one that picked up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. We want to go ahead and just set this up for a quick trading opportunity. All right, and it looks like the stop is now getting closer and closer. The market moving back a little bit, a little spike here and there. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, we, if we go two minutes in, I want to start clearing up all my orders. So two minutes in, clear up all your orders. That's what I'm going to do. And as soon as that happens, let's go ahead and do this. All right, we're about, we're almost two minutes into this. And which means I'm going to only leave the uh, uh, the one trade open. Overall so far, it looks like we pretty much broke even right now on the trades that were implemented. And we're up about 100 and odd on this one right here. So not a big hoo not a big move. We just see a big upside move. This is a five minute chart. So a lot of traders would look at this and go, oh my God, five minute chart. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, all right. So what I'm going to do is we're two minutes in. So I'm going to go ahead and clear up all, all of my uh, buy stops in it. So let's do this, clear up uh, uh, my buy stops. All right. There we go. We cleared up there. We've just got one trade that is active right now. And I've got a trailing stop loss. If it continues to move with the market, it'll show us exactly where we are. There you can see I've cleared up all my pending orders. I've only got the, uh, uh, the Aussie US dollar now still active. We'll let this one ride. We have a trading stop loss that's going to trail be, uh, behind the market. If it continues to go long, and remember traders, what do we say? We expect a bullish move on that pair, right? So let's go take a look right here. And um, go back to, uh, let's go back to the charts. And uh, I'm going to look at Aussie US dollar. This is the only the only pair that's still open right now. And I am in on a buy. So we've really seen a nice little bullish. Uh, uh, this is called an MPD, which is a price uh, a momentum price uh, detector right here. Uh, sorry, micro price detector. My bad. And you can see right here we've got a bullish uh, candle, which means indicates that. Uh, uh, pr uh, price is bullish. I'd like to see three of them in a row right here to really uh, confirm that the trend is uh, is strong. Uh, but the markets are moving. Let's go ahead and take a look right here at the actual charts. And I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the uh, uh, the Aussie US dollar. And let's see. That's the only one that's still active right now. This is the one right here. Actually, holding price. Look how prices grayed out because uh, they holding off the prices. So while I'm looking for that data, let's go take a look and see what came out on the news. All right, and uh, um, let's take a look. Now remember, traders, keep in mind everything we said. Right, looking for whoa, check this out. This is what's moved the market last month, and you can see right here that we're moving the market this month. So the unemployment rate dropped to 5.2%. I was looking for more, more of an uptick on the uh, employment change. But what we got was the unemployment rate that actually spiked up to, uh, or spiked down, which is a positive, uh, positive move to 5.2%. That is solid right there, right? So that did a solid for us on the, our trade. And that's what's creating this uh, upside move that we're seeing currently right now. Go to the, I'm going to go to the... Uh, Woo, look at that. Woo! All right, Karen, you better believe it. It's happening. All right. I know Karen's busy doing the pip dance right now because she is in on these Aussie crosses. She's got a lot of banking on the Aussie dollars to do. 
And you see a nice little upside move. Brilliant. And I may have triggered my trades a little bit late. Unless, uh, possibly, or I got maybe a little slippage on my, my orders. But the markets are moving and they're moving solid. Let's go to let's go to all the Aussie crosses. Go Aussie CAD. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Is it that difficult, my friends? All right. Is it that difficult? Boom shakalak. There we go. You can say it. Boom shakalak. Aussie dollars are moving and they're moving solid to the upside. Listen here. This is not a this is a, a, a setup that we saw technically, and this is the reason why traders. I wanted to go ahead and make sure that we spoke before the news came out, right? I wanted to go ahead and give you my views and my perspective about what the markets are telling us technically because we are technical traders. And I know that uh, uh, there's a lot of traders that believe that the fundamentals lead the, uh, uh, that the fundamentals lead the technicals, but I have a very strong belief that the technicals lead the fundamentals and that we can, we can see exactly what we can anticipate in the fundamentals based on what the technicals are telling us. And so this has given us an awesome setup. And we've seen how the markets move right here. Let's go ahead and continue. And I'm going to go ahead and check out uh, this uh, um, JPY. I am in on uh, Aussie JPY 2. Hold on, traders. I have to, I have to, I have to check out my, my trade right now. Um, this, is, this is getting personal right now. I've got to check out my trade. And we are doing really really good so trades are flying right now we're up on almost everything on the aussies right now uh well these are my trades that i'm in right now this is good news let's go take a look at the next trade this is the aussie jpy except beautiful rally here and by the way traders where can price move to all right take a look right here write it down if you want to write it down 74.52 on aussie jpy i can see resistance at 74.52 all right 74.52 and it's all based off my my wave cycles here we can see price one two three and four it's on its way to one all right it's on its way to that that price and what did i say was 70 uh, um 74.52 right let's go to the next one i'm gonna go to uh euro aussie all right what do we say euro aussie is doing oh, check this out traders what did i say about euro aussie what did I talk about? What did we talk about, right? What did we discuss regarding our, uh, uh, and I'm going to go to the daily, check out the daily right here, all right? Price is starting to work its way back down. It's, like I said, it's not telling us to sell right now based on swing trading, but it's getting really, really, really close, all right? And that's what you can look for. Now, Denai says here, Denai says, I got slipped on my orders. But I'm going to hold uh, the trade for a little bit longer. Oh, absolutely. It looks like I was slipped on my trades as well. So with that type of, with the, uh, by the way, trades, when, when the market jumps like that, when the market, I call it when the market gaps, like we've just seen it right now. When the market gaps like this, I'm going to put my phone down, I'm checking out my trades here. Uh, but when the market gaps like this, um, you know, uh, 40, 50 pips, then what happens is the broker is going to fill you at the next available price. So whatever that next available price is, that could be 30 pips up, you will be slipped, all right? You will absolutely be slipped. And the more lot sizes you trade, especially if you trade over 10 lots, the more lot sizes you trade, you are going to be slipped. Listen here, I'm listening. Every time you hear that tick, tick, tick noise, my stop is trailing the market right now. It's got a trading stop loss. It's trailing the market. So as you start seeing the profits generating, uh, sorry, the profits increasing, it's starting to bank, 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 bank as we move. So we're making some profit. So here we go, traders. Euro Aussie dollar. Looking for a sell off on Euro Aussie dollar. Pound. Let's go to pound. And pound. Pound Aussie dollar right here. Woo! Starting to retrace. Just like we said, right? Here's the 15 minute time, uh, sorry, the one hour time frame. And there it is, traders. We've completed the fifth wave. The market has completed that fifth wave. We're now expecting the market to go ahead and create a little ABC retracement move. And it's going to come back down and give us that retracement before it takes off to the upside. This is no secret to any sort of technical trader that yes, price will go ahead and retrace. And then it will go ahead and start extending the game. So all we're looking for right now is just correction. Then opportunity to go back back up north. So I'm not saying pound Aussie is going to be off the table with uh, no trading opportunities, 
I'm saying traders get ready for the market to dip, then to rally back up again. And when it does that, we're going to be the first one on that bus, and we are going to drink whatever they're serving on that trade. Traders, this is about pretty much it that we have tonight. It's been one heck of a ride. I love the way uh, the fundamentals have moved the markets this, this evening, and especially the, 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 the Asian session. The Asian session is very thin trading during the Asian session. So anytime we have some really good news, and that was unexpected, a, a, a drop of 5.2% on the unemployment rate, that was unexpected. We didn't expect that. It wasn't in the forecast. And if that's going to happen, we're going to get the market bounce a little bit more. The only thing that traders need to be really careful and cautious about is when the market is trading very thin, and you do trade with uh, straddle trades, right? Straddle trade is when you place orders above and below the market just before the news. When you trade those type of trades, You've got to have some sort of system in place that's going to be able to manage your stops very quickly to go ahead and lock up. Now, what could also happen, and these are the type of things you need to realize, what could also happen is the broker start widening the spread. So when you go ahead and put in your straddle trade, the buy and sell orders, make sure it's not too tight because if it's too tight, what's going to happen is the broker's going to go ahead and widen the spread. They're going to pick you up on the buy and the sell and pop you in and out of the market and just take your money and then go ahead and start moving in the direction. So be careful about that. Just before the news, the market can go ahead and widen the spread, and so you've got to be careful that you don't get into the market too early. That allows you to get there and get caught up in that uh, in that spread. Now you can also wait it out. You can also wait for the market to go ahead and break in the direction, pull slightly back, and then take off again and buy in at that point. Especially if the data is really good. All right, I've got out of trade the news. In fact, uh, about uh, uh, 20 years ago, that sounds a long long time ago, but about 20 years ago, I was fully committed in trading fundamentals. Uh, over the last 15 years, I've been more into swing trading. I did a lot of scalping in the first uh, uh, probably 10 years of my trading, a lot of scalping, and I've been trading for 25 plus years. So in the first 10 years, I did a lot of scalping, and I really struggled to get out of scalping and start trading as a swing trader. Because, um, because when you get used to being in the market for such short periods of time, it's really difficult to take it to, to convert into a swing trader because then you have to stay, hang on to those trades for a much longer period without being anxious about getting in and out of that trade again or closing out that position. So doing these type of trades during news, I've got out of that, but I tell you this much, there's a lot of things that you can learn from the news, specifically how the broker handles your orders. And so be very, very cautious about it, but also at the same time, you know, don't go in. We used to trade with 80% of our capital when the when the news came out. But then at the time that I, I traded, a sl a slippage was not a factor. We were filled at our orders. So we always got our price and we were never slipped. It was only back in about 2003 where they started implementing the uh, the slippage rule where now it's the next available price that they will fill you up and not actually fill you at your orders. So when that took place, we had to move out of that, you know, 80% of capital into the market and start trading with something a little bit less, uh, uh, you know, less volume because of the, the amount of slippage that we would uh, occur. But anyway, it's been a good, it's been a good night. Traders, I, thank you for joining me. If you have not, I, I'm going to go ahead and see this. Yep, there we go. Uh, if you're not following me currently right now on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, you want to go ahead and do that right now. In fact, go to my YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is, uh, just go ahead and type up FX Big Dog on YouTube. Type up FX Big Dog and you will find me. All right, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're going to be posting some great video content, and we're going to be talking about a lot of these things of what you, what to do and what not to do in the market, and how to be able to handle these type of trading opportunities that do come along. We look at a lot of setups, like we did this uh, with the weekly outlook, and based off the weekly outlook, we're going to go ahead and anticipate what the week is going to be like for us as traders and which current pairs are really the pairs that you should be looking and paying attention to. All right. So with that being done, thank you very much for coming out. I love you guys. And uh, I will see you in the next video. And uh, you're welcome. Uh, we've got a lot of traders right here. Pat says, thank you very much. Uh, Denise, you're welcome. Uh, Pat, yeah, you're welcome for the bonus session. Absolutely. We've got Carol says there. Thank you, Gary. Thanks for taking the time this evening. Absolutely, Carol. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, we got Steve, Steve in the house. Steve, don't forget me. Steve's going to organize me uh, uh, um, to get onto the field with the Eagles when I go in December to watch the Eagles play the Giants. Yes, Steve, you said that. I'm, 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 you said that. 
All right, Steve. All right, thank you, Steve. Appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow. Let's see. The trading room starts at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Make sure you guys are in there for those that are part of my trading room. Love you guys. Have an awesome time. We'll see you all next uh, next time. Zephyr's big dog. Say cheers.